Hi everyone, welcome to the next installment of Charts in Perspective, where we use charts to dive into the world of economics and financial markets. I'm Jennifer Nash, an economic and market research analyst for Vetify. A few months ago, the Census Bureau released its annual report on household income data for 2023. This report is rich with information, and in this video, we'll take a closer look at a few of its subsets. First, we're going to examine household incomes by looking at the quintile averages. In addition to the five quintiles, the Census Bureau also publishes the income for the top 5% of households. Most people think in nominal terms, so our first chart here illustrates the current dollar values for the six cohorts since 1967. In other words, it shows the value of a dollar at the time received, aka not adjusted for inflation. During 2023, the median average household income rose 8% to $80,730. Additionally, we can see that all of the other groups showed year-over-year -year increases from 2022 in their average household income, again in current dollars. But we can't just ignore inflation. Our next chart here adjusts for inflation and chained $2023. In other words, the incomes in earlier years have been adjusted upward to the purchasing power of the dollar in 2023. Even after adjusting for inflation, all groups saw increases in 2023 from the previous year, although not as large. However, the average household incomes are no longer at their all-time highs like we saw in the previous chart. All cohorts hit record highs in 2019, and then the top quintile, and top 5%, hit new all-time highs in 2021. This next chart shows the real cumulative growth in household income over the past 50 plus years. Using this method, we can get a better idea of the underlying trends over the years. Note in particular the growing spread between the top quintile and especially the top 5% and the other four quintiles. The growth spread began in the mid 1980s during the Reagan administration, the era of supply side economics, AKA Reaganomics and trickle down economics. As this chart illustrates, Tax and other policy changes to benefit the wealthier households didn't exactly have the heavily promoted trickle-down effect. Now, it's important to understand that the data in these first few charts has used the mean income for each quintile. The mean, or average, income is higher than the median, or middle-of-the-range income. But for the remainder of the video, we'll be analyzing the median household income. Which brings us to our next set of charts. Median household income by age. Households are by no means locked into the same quintile over time. Young, educated households with professional skills and aspirations will typically move into higher earning brackets during their financial life cycles. Households that are dependent on income from unskilled labor and non-professional service employment won't see the same financial progress over the years. So let's review the household income another way, this time focusing on the incomes by age bracket for the heads of household. Because this is a longitudinal analysis across five decades, including the stagflation of the 70s, we've used the Census Bureau's real inflation-adjusted series, chained in 2023 dollars. Again, meaning that the incomes in earlier years have been adjusted upwards to the purchasing power of the dollar in 2023. So here we can see the real household incomes of the six age brackets and the year-over-year -year changes each experienced. All cohorts saw growth in 2023, some only slightly, while others more significantly. Specifically, it looks like the three younger age groups saw smaller annual growth than the three older groups. But a more revealing comparison is the cumulative growth of median incomes for the six age brackets. Remember from our last slide, the 65 and older cohort had the smallest median household income. But here we see this is the age group that has also experienced the most income growth since 1967. It has dramatically outperformed since the turn of the century, thanks to Social Security and private and government pensions. But another key factor has been the surprising growth in the labor force participation rate of this cohort, which has no doubt contributed to the outperformance. Now, something else to notice from this chart, the youngest age bracket, 15 to 24, had one of the lowest median household incomes, as well as the smallest growth. But when you think about who makes up this age group, 
like teenagers, college students, individuals just starting their careers in entry-level positions, or those still exploring professional paths, it should come as no surprise since many are in roles that tend to offer lower pay. Now let's shift our focus from median household income by age to median household income by state. For this section, our data only goes back to 1984. In this first chart, we've sorted the data based on the decline from each state's peak year. The median household income peaked in 2019, and in 2023, we were less than 1% off that peak with the median household income for the U.S. at $80,610. Currently, 11 states, as well as Washington, D.C., are at all-time highs for their median household incomes. Additionally, six states are currently 10% or more off their peak with Idaho sitting the farthest away, down 14.2% since its real peak in 2021. In this next table, we sort the data by the 2023 median income column, so it's easy to see which states have the highest and lowest incomes. A quick look at the table shows the huge spread between the 105.7 thousand median in Washington, D.C. and the 50.4 thousand in Mississippi. Of course, the cost of living, which varies significantly across the country, is a critical factor in comparisons of the raw data. Now for an idea of the geographical slash regional distribution of median incomes, here's a map that color codes the states based on quintile breakdown. For an easy comparison, we have the year 1984 and 2023 dollars on the left and our latest data from 2023 on the right. The differences in the maps may seem subtle, but for some states, like Montana or Idaho or Ohio, the changes are drastic. We'll close out our state's data by looking at our 21st century winners and losers by comparing where each state ranked in 2000 to where they are now. The key column to notice here is the one labeled change. 21 states plus Washington DC have risen in the rankings, 25 have declined, and four are unchanged. Keep in mind there are many economic and political factors underlying the changes in rank that are beyond the scope of our analysis. And lastly, I'd like to close out our video by examining median household incomes based off of educational attainment. What is the relationship between education and household income? Our first chart in this section helps answer that question. As expected, higher levels of educational attainment are associated with higher household income. And with this chart, we can see just how much each level of education adds onto income. Notably, a bachelor's degree median is more than double that of a high school grad. Additionally, a master's degree adds nearly 20,000 to the bachelor's median, while a professional degree adds almost 55,000. The educational attainment of householders has increased over the time frame of our data, meaning that since 1991, more people are getting higher levels of education. Here's a pair of pie charts that highlights this difference. On the left, we see the breakdown from 1991, and on the right, it shows the breakdown from 2023. Just by glancing, it's easy to see which slices have grown and which have shrunk over time. But this column chart here gives us a clearer sense of just how much the individual cohorts have changed from 1991 to 2023. Here are some of my takeaways. First, the number of householders with less than a high school degree has been cut by almost two thirds. Second, the number of householders with bachelor's degrees have almost doubled. And third, the number of householders with associates, masters, and doctorates have more than doubled. Educational attainment has clearly advanced over the time frame of the Census Bureau series, and the income benefits are obvious. But of course, the cost of post high school education is substantial. Here's a snapshot of some inflation comparisons since 1991. Yes, advanced educational attainment correlates with higher household incomes, but the cost of that education has soared, even more than medical care or a new car. Well, that's all for our discussion on household income. Thank you for tuning in. 
For more economic and market insights, visit advisorperspectives.com and check out the AP chart section.